so this this week something um happened and i was just you know I, i was speaking to my sister over the course of the the week and um she was telling me something about that happened to my niece and um i was furious i was like how can someone do that to my niece like those are precious little ones and i was beginning to take offense on behalf of my sister i don't know how many of us are like that that someone does something to your sister or to your husband or to your parents and you get offended on behalf of your parents even your parents or your husband will let that thing go but you're still angry at the person and i found myself at that place this week i'm like no that shouldn't happen why would this person do this to this little girls so i slept with that on my heart so that morning when the next morning when i woke up <laughs> You know the word of god is always precious in the like precious when you open it so the the scripture i was going to read not even the scripture i think while i was praying i was still praying i haven't even started reading the bible and the 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 holy spirit but to remind that when you condemn someone over something you already are judged i'm like ah, it's not that deep now holy spirit <laughs> <laughs> like I was just angry. I'm not there there's no need for judgment on this. I release it and that's where I arrested my case. So I spoke to my sister and I said to her that we are not going to we are not going to take this to heart. We are going to allow the father to deal with this. And most importantly, I said to those girls that what see there's nothing that anyone can do. The one thing I want you to understand is that you are loved by God. That's what I said. And it's not so that you have this at the back of your mind and say to them that when I grow up I will tell this person what they did. I'm like we we release it to God. We release everything that has happened with this God. And that that brings me to what I'm going to talk about. You no, know, we've been talking about faith. We've been talking about the issue of faith. And when we talk about faith, especially those of us that we grow up in Pentecostal, we think um faith is to get things from God, right? I know one of the things pastor said during the course of the message that for some of us what our faith assignments will be will be to ask God that I want to stop doing something that's what you want to use your faith for so this morning that's where we want to challenge our faith on so I've titled this morning's um message add to your faith so what are those things you're supposed to have to have it faith is there because we already said that what's without faith it is impossible to please God so we want to please God but while we have the faith on lockdown what are the other things we need to also carry along with this faith So it's not just faith that we are carrying and we have to add other things to this faith. I know the 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 premise why we are here in the first place is the fact that what we are sons and we are daughters of the father. And I always say that that the reason why you are a son it comes the 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 package of sonship comes with discipline. So if the Lord cannot discipline you, if the Lord cannot correct you, then you are not a legitimate child of the father. And the purpose of God in, in in the whole of this is so that you will have many sons. It's not to have um children I say you know the way parents are they don't have favorite children but they have some they said but they are not favorite child. But that's not God's intention. There is no favorite child with the Lord. Some of us we know how to get to the heart of the father. It's not because we are more prepared. Do you get what I'm saying? Some of us we understand the heart of the father. We know how to 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 please him. But it's not because he prefers us above somebody else. It's just because we've understood the the or we understand how our father relates to us. The same thing as a child. You know that there's one of the you have one child that knows when to ask mommy or daddy what's wrong? Is something wrong? And you you are more inclined to talk to that child. It's not because the the child understands you more. I mean the you, the child prefers you. It's just because they've understood that okay when mommy or daddy looks this way there might be something wrong let me go and check the same thing are we are we the kind of children that we are always looking at to the heart of the father that is something wrong with my father and my lord is there something i can do for you is there something is there a way i can make you glad is there a way i can bring smile to your face and i said that in hebrews chapter 2 verse 10 hebrews chapter 2 verse 10 says god the one who made all things and for whose glory all things exist wanted many people to be his children and share his glory that's the ultimate price of all of those things god just didn't want jesus christ if he wanted to if just like, well if since this man that i created and gave dominion decided to to go his way i'll just spend this time with my my son and the holy spirit and the angels we'll just be by ourselves and let let them go and figure out themselves but what he said what he wanted many sons and that's the intention of the lord and it hasn't still changed his intention is to have many sons 
to have many sons and not just to have us as children, but so that we can share in his glory. He says he did what he needed to do. He made perfect the one who leads those people to salvation. God's making us perfect. And we always say here that perfection is not that we are without sin. It's what that we are daily patterning our lives after the Father, submitting our lives to him and allowing him to change us from the inside out. The Bible says that as we behold in the mirror, we are being changed day by day into the image of Jesus. And that's, our, that's, that's the whole essence of us being here. And that's this, the whole thing that Jesus Christ came here to, to do. He came here to show us the perfect example of what it means to walk in light of the Father. He says what? He made perfect the one who leads those people to salvation. He made Jesus a perfect savior through his suffering. Some of us, we have to suffer. And our suffering is not because we did wrong. That's what Jesus said. He said, we will suffer if they persecuted me. Who said they are not going to persecute you? If they insulted me, who told you they are not going to insult you? But he said, well, let all of those things happen because you're following me, not because you are a wrongdoer. So they are persecuting you, they are abusing you, or they are being mean to you. It's not because um, people look at you that in this office, you are the only person that doesn't like talking to people. No. So that's what we want to do. We want to learn all of those things, that the provision that has been made for us. So that we can see the, the, the way we ought to live. That's what the Bible says, the way we ought to live. So on this journey of faith, faith is good. We, that's the only way we can please God. And there are so many wonderful things that we said faith can do. But one thing I want us to understand that faith, and I already said that it's not just, it's not for us to get things from God. It's so that our lives can be, can be chiseled into the life of Jesus. That's what God uses faith for. So it's not, uh, I need something. I write out my confession. I'll start declaring it. No, that's not just what faith is for. It's not, it's so that our lives can be patterned after Jesus. I'm going to be reading this long scripture to us. We'll read it in two different translations and we'll see what the Lord has for us. Um, Second Timothy, Second Peter, Second Peter chapter one from verse one to 11. Second Peter chapter one from verse one to 11. It says Simon Peter, a born servant, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given us some things, all things. That pertain to life, not just life, and godliness. So we have all things. The all things that we have is not so that we can enjoy material things. It's that pertains to life, but including that is what that pertains also to what godliness. It says through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through this you may be partakers of divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust it says but also for this very reason so you have all of those things you have all of those precious promises you have been called to life and godliness but for all of those reasons the reason why you have all of those things that have been given to you for what giving all diligence add to your faith virtue so virtue what knowledge so knowledge self-control so self-control perseverance so perseverance godliness so godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness love for if those things are yours and abound you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of jesus christ for he who lacks those things is short sight short short Sighted even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be more diligent to make your call and election sure. I think that, that that's where we should actually see that and pause. Remember, one of I think it was during one of the edify that Pastor was um was sharing with us about what he says was examine yourself. Don't let someone do the examination for you. Examine yourself. And that's what the scripture is talking about. It says, Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, if you do the examination by yourself, 
He says, you will, be never, um, you will never stumble. For, for so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Jesus. And that's the essence of it. I don't want our story in this house to be those people that people don't know. They are very religious or they, are, they go to church. But in terms of their attitude, uh, you can't stand them. No. If, we, if we've been born again for 30 years, 15 years, 20 days, few weeks and we are not spiritually mature or if we think we are spiritually mature but in our character we still we lack um we are not grounded in our character then our spirituality is nothing if if we read the bible we pray in tongues we come to church we we do all of the christian disciplines and our character is lacking our spirituality is nothing. So I want us to hear this and hear as well. I know when Pastor Okay was praying this morning, I'm like, God just gave him all the prayers I wanted us to pray. So we did the prayer ahead so that this word can really sink in. And I'm, as I'm, I told you my own experience over the week, so as I'm preaching to you, I'm preaching to myself. We have to be, says by their fruits, we shall know them. So we have to be people that we are not just people of faith by the tag behind our car believers house or by the, the slogan we say bless you but by our fruits by our words by our deed people know that we belong to Jesus look at the story and the testimony of Peter he said when he spoke they knew that this was this man wasn't a learned man he didn't go to school but knew that what he's been with Jesus can the world look at us and say that she's been with Jesus or he's been with Jesus you know, sometimes um, people that meet you at work or in church can actually look at us and say, we've been with Jesus. But can your husband look at you and say, you've been with Jesus? Can your children look at you and say, you've been with Jesus? Can your relative look at you and say, you've been with Jesus? And that's the first litmus test of our walk with God. We should be able to ask our spouses, ask our brothers, ask our sisters, our cousins, those that live with us in that tough times and ask them, what would you think about me? Like how I was sharing with the ladies the other day that I, I don't know if it's a, a good thing. I asked my children, that, have you ever, have you guys noticed um, any changes in mommy lately? And I was going to, I thought probably they would just say, oh no, nothing really. And he said, yes. And they started, oh, you don't do this again. Oh, you, I'm like, ah, guys, <laughs> were you just waiting to bring the report card out? So they started telling me all the things I've stopped doing, all the bad things, not there. Uh, all the bad things like our mommy used to scream before, before like they said, I'm like, oh wow, I didn't know. <laughs> so they can see if they are not saying it to you, it's not because they are not saying. My sons are eight and six, so they, they 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 gave it to me clearly, and I had to take that report card back to God and say, okay, this is how far we've gone, and the work still continues. But those are the first testament of our work with God. If your children or your husband cannot really say that this person loves God, that means no matter how, how many like people out there say, oh, no, she's a person of faith, she's a person of, please discount those testimonies. It's the people that sleep with you, that wake up with you, that walk with you. Those are the, the best testament of how true and genuine our faith are. And that's what I want us to take in this, um, this lesson today. I'll, I'll still be coming back and sharing with us those things. We will see those characters that, um, Peter told us to have. So we'll actually look at them practically, how to do them. So it's not just, oh, be humble, be diligent, be kind hearted. I'm like, we'll look at them or look at biblical examples of those that exhibited those character traits and we'll see how we can actually, we can actually pattern our own lives according to those things. So the same scripture we read again, I'm going to read it from Amplified Classic. So you see the, the, it gave us many words, many words, so that we can actually have a better understanding of what the scripture is saying to us. So it says, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle, special messenger of Jesus Christ, to those who have received, obtain an equal privilege of like precious faith with ourselves and through the righteousness of God and Savior Jesus Christ. And I think it's important to, to note that word. It says, we've obtained an equal privilege. So this is someone that actually lived with Jesus. He walked with Jesus. He slept with Jesus. So he's saying, whatever it is that we have received, you guys have received the same. You did not receive second class um, salvation. We received the same equal, the same grade of salvation with the same one you are. It's not a second class um, salvation. So it's good to have this in context. He says, and through the righteousness of our, Lord, of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He says, may grace, that's God's favor and peace, 
which is a perfect well-being, all necessary good, all spiritual prosperity, and freedom from fears and agitating passions and moral conflict. Can you see all of those things? So some of us, we, we are sound in faith, but we are still agitated when we are walking. We are still people that are fearful. We have conflict in our souls that we know we, are, we want to do something. We know that this is what God would do or this is what God would have me do. But because you don't want people to question where you stand, you're not able to take a stand for God. We call that what's moral conflict. It says, be more, this is, after I said, I says, the, oh, the grace of God, that's what we read in each hour. It says, may the grace of God be multiplied. So you can see what that grace is. It may be multiplied to you. That's the full, personal, precise, and correct knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ. It says, for his divine power has bestowed upon us all things that are requisite and suited to life and godliness. So the power the Lord has given to us is for each for salvation. But it's for godliness as well. Because sometimes we, we, we measure ourselves by, oh, am I, am I able to pray for the sick? Am I able to lay hands on the sick? Am I able to, to intercede for hours? And we forget the foundation of our lives. It says, um, I can't remember the person that said it. It says, the character is who you are in the secret. When nobody is there, that's who you are. So as a believer, when nobody is there, when, when nobody is listening to the tongue, when nobody is listening to the, to the messages that you have to preach, who are you in the secret? When you have opportunity to cheat and nobody will, well, you think nobody will find us, what would you do? Would you choose to stand for God? Would you choose to, to represent God? So I'll continue. It says, for his divine power has, um, has bestowed upon us all things that are requisite and suited to life and godliness. Through, through the full personal knowledge of him who called us by and to his own glory and excellence. To his own glory and excellence. Because sometimes uh, for, for Christians, I don't know if it's really common here. Back home, people would even say there was a time that if you want to hire someone, say, oh, if the person is a believer, I will hire you. But now if the person is a believer, that's the more reason why they won't hire you. Because they know that you come, you want to have fellowship in, in the office, you have to have a time to pray, and you're not doing the work you're supposed to do. There's time for everything. The fact that we are believers, it's not at the office that you need to go and pray. Like the first thing you do, you, you anoint your office. Do all the anointing before you come to the office. We have to be people of excellence. That the grade of work we do has to be outstanding. That's what made um, Daniel and his friend to stand out. It says, it's, it the knowledge they had, they were like, nobody compares to this ones. But some of us, when, when you talk about excellence, you think um, it's for certain people, it's not for believers that we, we can pray hard, we can lay hands and trust our, our bosses to, to get saved. But sometimes you don't even have the opportunity to preach salvation to them. The, the opportunity you might have to actually um, speak to your boss will be the kind like, where did you find this kind of wisdom? Then you can point them that there's out a spirit in man, the inspiration of the Almighty. Give it him understanding. That's your message today. Because you tell them, I have someone, I have someone that I speak to. But sometimes we want to do, do the, the, the signs that are supposed to follow us. We, we want to take, we, we are supposed to live in signs and wonders. But some of us, we, we want to go and display that oh, I'm with Jesus. Jesus is for me. Rather than letting our actions and, and our, our lives speak for us. We want to do the talking with our words, but let your action be the one doing the talking. This is what I will start from verse, I mean, I will read from, continue from verse 5. It says, for this very reason, adding diligence, we're going to talk about that diligence. It says, adding diligence to divine promises. Adding diligence to divine promises. Adding diligence to divine promises. You would receive the word of God, but if you are not diligent with that word, it's not going to produce anything for you. We will receive the promise of God. But if we don't have diligence to divide promise, we are not going to see results. He says, employ every effort in exercising your faith to develop virtue. Excellence. So when you talk about virtue, you're talking about what? Excellence, resolution, Christian energy. And in exercising virtue, develop knowledge, intelligence. You hear some people that, ah, the only thing I read is just the Bible. I, I don't like reading. That's, that's, that's not Christian character. No. Even Paul said when he was in prison, he said, tell, tell um, Timothy to bring my parchment. He says, well, Jesus Christ, is, when he was at the temple, after he read that scripture today, he said, today this has been fulfilled in your years. Because he knew what, what has been written concerning him. 
Daniel said was concerning those prophecies that has been spoken. Because he knew those prophecies that has gone behind, I mean, before, ahead of him. So they understood. So it's not, we, we are believers, we read the Bible, but there are other things we have to read. And God has given us that guidelines of those things. Whatever is pure, whatever is true, whatever is godly. So in case you're saying, oh, I don't know what to read, I don't want to read John. But God has given us that guideline. Whatever is true, whatever is pure, whatever is of good reports, think on those things. Read It's because you have read them, that's why you can ponder on them. If you don't have anything you're in, in your mind, there's nothing to think about. There's nothing to ponder or meditate on. So make sure you're getting things into your mind. So he talked about knowledge, which is intelligence. And in exercising knowledge, develop what? Self-control. So those are some of the things now we have to add. So we are adding to faith, virtue. And we are adding to virtue, what? Knowledge. We are adding to knowledge, what? Self-control. And to self-control, develop steadfastness. We are talking about patience, endurance. And in exercising steadfastness, develop godliness. And in exercising godliness, develop brotherly affection. And I, when I was reading this, I'm like, if you've talked about brotherly affection, or, um, why do we have to talk about love again? Like, those should be synonyms, right? But that means um, we should double up on our love work. That, that's what he's trying to say to us. And in exercising brotherly affection, or develop Christian love. And when you talk about Christian love, Christian love is not the one that reciprocates the love that you receive. I've said that here. It's not the love that, okay, I'm sowing love so that I'll re re um, receive love. No, you give to those that are not even able to repay you back. That's the kind of love you're talking about. It says, for as these qualities are yours and increasingly abound in you, you would keep, they will keep you from being idle or un unfruitful unto the full personal knowledge of Jesus the Messiah, the anointed one. For whoever lacks these qualities is blind, spiritually short-sighted, seeing only what is near to him, and has become oblivious to the fact that he was cleansed from his old sins. Because of these brethren, be all more solicitous and eager to make sure to rectify, to strengthen, and to make steadfast your calling an election for if you do this you never stumble or fall thus there will be richly and abundantly provided for you entry into the entire kingdom of our lord and jesus christ and i believe that's what we are all walking towards to be with the father at the end of it all. because if you run all of this race you get all the accolade of men and you you don't make it to heaven then it's 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 nothing so for us to get to that destination, it says make sure you're hard into this. Make sure it's not it's not um it's not a work of perfection, but you're making steps in the wrong direction. When God brings something to your mind, you're you're trying to make adjustments in line of the scripture. So we already talked about it. Faith works by love, love for people and love for God. Those two things they work hand in hand. And we said prayer foils our faith. But the other thing I want us to know again is we talked about diligence, all of those things that we're supposed to have. So we're going to be looking at it. So walking by faith is not careless living. It's not a license to do whatever we want to do. In the name of, um, well, I'm a Christian, the blood of Jesus will cover me. I can just go and ask for forgiveness. It's not when we intentionally go against God's will. That's not what, it's not a license for us to live anyhow. It's not a license to live carelessly. Because, um, I, I was um, reading this book and um, this, this pastor, he took the uh, survey, like people come to church and he was asking that, I mean, for those that have been in church and they stopped coming to church. So one of the surveys they took and they asked them was, um, why did they stop coming to church? On the top of the list is the fact that people, especially those that were new to faith, is, the, is the, they thought people, I mean, people in church, believers especially, they are, they are phony. They are people that pretend they are one thing in church. And another thing outside. And especially unbelievers, like, they, they just can't get it. Like, why do we have church behavior? The way we have church clothes on Sunday, you have what to wear. We have church behavior. And that's not the way we are outside. Why, why are we like that? So they, they just can't wrap their mind around it. So that's one of the things that got people thrown out of the faith. And one prayer I always pray for myself that, Lord, I will not be an hindrance to somebody else's faith. I will not be a reason why somebody will say, if, if she's a Christian or if he's a Christian, I don't want to worship that God. That will not be my testimony. I pray that will not be your testimony in the name of Jesus. 
and for that not to be our testimony, it means that what? You know what Paul said? said there are things that I, I want to do, but I don't do them. The things I don't want to do, those are the things I'm fine and I'm doing. It says, oh, wretched man, who will save me from this power of the flesh? And that should be our prayer that, Lord, our desire is to please you in our words, in our deeds, and in our actions. That we live for you, not just when people are there. That the, 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 the greatest motivation of our lives will be to live for the audience of one will be to live to the audience of one. I, ha- I heard someone illustrate it this way that someone, what, they were asking her, how is it that you, your life in the secret and outside is all the same? And she said, the, the God, and she asked God that everyone has been asking, what, how would you help me explain this to them? And God told her this, that there were no audience. You were living before me. You were living and living blamelessly before me. And when I opened the curtain, I because the audience were at the, um, behind the curtain. When I opened them, they just saw what I was saying. So they did, you didn't have to ask. They just saw what I was expressing because I allowed them into the relationship we have. And that should be our testimony that whatever we are doing, we are doing it to the audience of one. So that when God opens or allows them into our lives, they're just seeing what they see Jesus experience or what we experience with Jesus. It's not us trying to be with Jesus. And when we are now with people, we are trying to, to display, oh, this is who we are. No, they just see what we do with Jesus. So our greatest desire and greatest ambition in life is what? That we live for this audience of one. Because it's the one that is going to judge us. It's the one that is going to reward us. So everything we do should be motivated by the love for the Father. So like we said, like every truth in the scripture, balance is very important. When I'm saying that we have to... to do all of this. I'm not saying we have to be people that will be so serious because we are trying to live for God and they talk to you like I'm meditating, I'm trying to think on that, that's not what I'm saying life, joy is part of the package of the scripture and um, just this story, I'm sharing a lot of story but that's our, I mean, our reality as a family with our, with our son he woke up I think a few days ago so he, he wanted to do do, um, a schoolwork and he wanted to do an activity because uh, that activity had um, there's a math, math manipulative he wanted to work with it's, um, it's like um, a toy airplane so that's what he just wanted to so he wanted to do that exercise he didn't want to do the previous one I'm like we don't build you can't just come and want to do you want to roof a house when you have not built on the foundation we can't uh, skip lesson 30 lesson 40 I want to go and do lesson 35 because we enjoy it and when I was, I was like, okay, it will do it. So when we started doing this, I just saw that he was grumbling. What is the, he was just looking. So I'm like, what is the matter? Why are you looking sad? I was like, he's sad because of the math. I'm like, oh, okay. And I, when we wake up every morning, the first thing after you pray, the first scripture they say is, well, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. So I told him, so I said, did you say your prayer this morning? I was like, he said, yes. So I'm like, what did you say? So he started, this is the day the Lord I sent. Like, I will be grumpy. <laughs> and I would squeeze my face. He just started laughing. So that resets the day. And I, was, I said to him that if, if the, the Bible says, well, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And I said, what is the opposite of strength? Weakness. So I said, what happens when you're grumpy? He says, I'm going to do Is that my, my sons, are, they are energetic. They are jumping, like literally from... From from dawn to, to dark, like literally, there's no dark moments in my house. I'm like, what happens with weakness? You didn't like that part of the weakness. I'm like, if you're sad, what happens? You're going to be weak. And that's just it. So we have, we have to hide that scripture in our hearts. I said all of this, that joy is part of the package of being a Christian. So we don't go around our house and putting up um, spiritual faces. Like, because some of us think the, the stronger our faces the more the power of the presence of the Holy Spirit we carry, because the Holy Spirit is easy, can easily communicate to us because we are paying attention to him. It does not work that way. The, the joy, joy is, is, is contagious. Joy is contagious. And in, in our homes, especially with the mothers, we want to allow our countenance to set the, 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 the atmosphere of our homes. If you're sad, if you're grumpy, believe me, everybody will be. If they don't have any reason to be grumpy, because mommy is grumpy, they will be grumpy as well. So we have to allow the joy of the Lord to rule our hearts. Let the joy, the peace of the Lord, let it permeate our hearts. And what this does is when we start living our lives in line with scripture, when you see something happening that is not in line with what you trust for, take a break. 
and go back to the scripture. Sometimes you don't even have to go to the scripture. It's just that word to the Lord that, Lord, I don't know why I'm feeling this way. I don't know why, why I'm acting this way. Would you just help me? Just tell you. Sometimes I thought that, like, mommy needs a timeout. Just, just go out and come back. Because especially now that they're even noticing that I, I'm changed. So he's even making me to be... So I'll just tell because I don't want to scream. It's not part of the package anymore. We dropped that. That's, um, and we are not going back there anymore. So I tell him, I need a time. I'll just give me some time. I want to be with God and I'll come back. So those are the things we want to leave that our lives should speak for God. So our life speaking for God is not drama. It's not drama. It's not like, oh, um, now I'm going to the store and people will see me and bless you, bless you. Like, it, it is the way we live. Like I said, living for an audience of one. If you have that at the back of your mind, I'm living for God. Then you don't have to act up. You don't have to, like, there is no pretense. There's no, you're not trying to. It is who you have before him. So in this scripture that we read, it talked about, if you, if you go home and you read that um, Second Peter, just that three chapters in the Bible, it talked about knowledge 16 times. It mentioned the knowledge of God and how to knowledge. So that, that means there's importance to this knowledge. So when we, when we talk about the knowledge of God, even, even in the prayer that Tim, um, Paul prayed for, for the, not just one church, he prayed a lot of prayer for all of those churches that he planted. He's always praying for the knowledge of God, the knowledge of God, the knowledge of God, the knowledge of God. There's something that happens with the knowledge of God. It helps us to wage war against the enemy. If you don't know who the, you are, then the enemy can actually tell lies. He can tell you that's what he did to Satan, and he hasn't changed his tactics. He's not, he's not um, bringing up new one. He's still using the, t- the same thing he did for Adam, and he does the same thing. He was just going to uh, question you. Do you know what God has said concerning you? If you now want to go into debate with the enemy, you can see that things will start changing. We look at Proverbs chapter 24, verse 3 to 4. It says, True wisdom, a house is built, and by understanding it is established. It says, By knowledge, the rooms are filled with precious and pleasant riches. There's wisdom, there's understanding. But it's knowledge that fills our rooms, fill our lives, make our lives fruitful. It's filled with what's precious and pleasant riches. That's what some of us want. That's what all of us actually want. So we know we have to partner with wisdom. So it's called wisdom, your sister. We have to partner with understanding. We have to depend on the word of God. This is what is the word of God. It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So you can't have you can't have wisdom that is outside of God. You will have earthly wisdom. And James talked about that wisdom. There is one wisdom that is pure. There is another wisdom that is corrupt. So which one do you want to have? So that's what we want to do to make sure that we are grounded in the truth and in the knowledge of God. Second Timothy chapter two verse fifteen. It says, "Study and do your best to present yourself to God approved." So where I want us to focus on is the, that first part. Say, study and do your best to present yourself approved to God. So the reason why I'm, I'm bringing the scripture, like I said to us, that if we don't know who we are in Christ, the enemy is going to mess up with us. The enemy is going to mess up with our lives. So say, study um, and do your best to present yourself to God approved, a workman tested by trial who has no reason to be ashamed, accurately handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth accurately handling the word of truth so we have to be people that are grounded in the truth we don't have to be um we don't have to go to a theological school but we have to be grounded in the truth of god you don't have to be a pastor to to know your bible to be able to defend the truth of the word that you believe so be a person of the scripture i know pastor will come and make fun of me too one chapter a day is not enough for you. <laughs> one chapter a day is not enough because one meal a day. So how many people eat just breakfast or lunch and they are done for the day? How many of us? Is there, is there anybody here? So you cannot live on one chapter a day. I don't know how you want to get that chapter. If you want to drink, some people would drink um, smoothie. So they are not eating food. They will drink smoothie. They will take snack. So there are other ways we can do that. You can do audio Bible. You can memorize. So you can use audio Bible will be like your smoothie. So, but you have to get the word of God in your spirit. 
you have to get the word of God in your spirit. Let me tell you another thing about this audio Bible. Your spirit man is never asleep. Your spirit man is never, even when you think you're not paying attention to the word, it's going to your spirit man. It's not for your mind. It's not because you want to memorize it. It's not because you want to know it. It's because you're trying to feed your spirit man. So audio Bible might not sound like you're doing, getting the word into your mind, but you're actually getting the word into your mind. And I can attest to that my children are the guinea pig of this experiment. They, they, go, they go to sleep with, with audio Bible like every day. And they would be asking, because there are some scriptures, they, they will start sometimes, they will start from Genesis and depending on how, sometimes they have the scriptures just going throughout the day. And they are, my children are very loud. So, and I'm wondering when they come and start telling me, they'll call the names of someone in the Bible. Who is that? They will tell me, oh, it's from Second Kings. I'm like, okay. Because and I'm wondering, how are you picking all those details of the scripture? I'm not talking about um, David and Goliath that they watch on. Because there are stories that, they, there are not even Bible stories for them. So, they are not stories that they would have read in Bible stories or watch on Superbook. They are not stories like that. And I'm wondering, where do you guys hear that from? And they say, oh, from the audio Bible. I'm like, okay. So you think you're, you're, you're just letting them pass them, but it's your spirit man that is fed. So if a child can benefit like that as an adult, our spirits are ageless. So there's no um, children's spirits and adult um, spirits. So all the spirits is ageless. So if that would benefit them, it will also benefit us. So make sure you're getting the word of God in your spirit man. It makes you strong. The way they say is uh, one vitamin a day. Uh -huh. This one is not vitamin. If you want, because you don't want to keep the enemy away for one day, you want to keep him away every day. Amen. And the scripture actually talked about diligence because that's where it started from. It said, "Be diligent and use diligence to hard all of those things." So when we talk about diligence, we said prayer is the fall to our face, and we said faith works by love. So I'm going to add another one, and this one said, "Diligence makes faith fruitful." Diligence makes faith fruitful. It makes God's gifts ours. Like the scripture we read the other time, that if, if you have the promises of God and you're not diligent to walk or to steward that word, you're not going to see results. So it takes someone that is diligent to actually steward the word of God to actually see it. To see that, okay, um, I'm trusting God for this. You can't just put it in your portfolio. Because some of us are word collectors. You hear God has done something, you write it in your journal. You don't even know where that journal is again. After you finish that one, you pick another one. We are stewards of the word, meaning that you go back every now and then, probably once in a quarter, you go back on, on those journals or wherever you write them. That's what, you cannot memorize that. Whatever God, I'll hide it in my heart. There's so much you can hide in your heart. So make an habit of documenting the work of God, the word of God to you. And, and when, when I do that, when I do that, I have, I have journals as far back as 2003, 2002. Journals, I still, when I was coming to Canada and um, I had excess luggage, <laughs> and they said, oh, what will you drop? Drop your food stuff. I said, no, I mean, drop your, drop your things. I said, they can leave the food stuff. My baby is going. My sister said, you're going to school. Are you going on a missionary trip? Why are you carrying all? I had all the Bibles I've ever used since I became a Christian. I carried all my Bibles. All my Bibles. like, you're going to school. Why are you carrying Bibles? I'm like, the food can, can wait. I, I need my journals. I need my, I need my Bibles. So because they are precious to me. That, that's what I've used to document the work of God with me. That, that at a time I can actually sit down and go through these things with my children and, and let them see what God has done for me, what God has done through me, what God has done with me. That is like, um, for me, I, I treasure those, those words that, you know, the way people, you say you are giving an estate to your child. I want to give them those things that God has done in me. Uh, that's one thing I want to, I have a journal for each of my child that I, I do all of those things. That at a time, they will come and say that I will present that to them that, as I've prayed for you over the years, this is what the Lord has said concerning you. And this is what I want to give you so that you can continue and build on those words that the Lord has spoken concerning you over the years. So I treasure those things. And it, whatever you don't treasure, you cannot get value from. So that's why I saying what? Add diligence to all of this. So diligence make our faith to be fruitful. So in verse 5 of that scripture that we read, I'm going to read it to us again. It says, for 
this very reason, add your diligence. Employ every effort to, your, to develop all of those things. So uh, that's why I'm saying that diligence is very, very important. You can't um, know all of this scripture and you're not faithful to preserve those things that the Lord has said to you. Walk on them, put them in front of you so that the Lord can know that, okay, this person is actually serious about these things I'm saying to them. So I'll, I'll read a few scriptures to us and um, we'll be able to, to just continue in the service. And next week, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more on those um, character traits. So I said here that if you are quick to obey God's instruction, our faith what we produce to the fullest. It's not um, when God has to remind you, have you done that? Or when God stops speaking, then you now have to go back and, okay, where was, what was the last thing that the Lord said to me? When we are quick to obey God's instruction, we experience a faith that is what is producing to the fullest. You know the, the parable of the soil. I say some will produce what? 30 fold, some will produce 60, and some will produce 100. So it's your choice. And remember that some of the seed that didn't produce because the birds came. He says it's coming for the word. So it's your choice. Are you going to allow the enemy to steal the word from your heart? Or are you going to be diligent and faithful to make sure you're hiding faith, you're hiding character, you're hiding what's all of those things that the Bible has spoken about? Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 7, it says, But as you are bound in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, and in all diligence, and in your love for us, see that you are bound in this great also. So these are the things that the Lord wants us to grow in. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 11, it says, And we desire that each one of you should show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end until the end that same scripture in the new living translation says our great desire is that you keep on loving others as long as life lasts in order to make certain that what we hope for we come through proverbs chapter 22 verse 29 says do you see a man diligent and skillful i already talked about that that wherever we are you're a nurse you're a doctor you're an engineer you're a teacher you're a student we have to be the best. We have to be the best. This is us. Do you see a man diligent and skillful in his business? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before obscured men. This is the one I love out of all this diligent scripture. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 24. It makes me laugh, but that's the truth. It says us, the lazy man does not roast what he is hunting, but diligence is a what is a man's precious possession so some of us we are a lazy man the lord has spoken concerning us the others are giving us promises but we are so lazy to fight that good fight of faith so he says a lazy man does not roast what he took in he went hunting he got the word he got that animal if it's bush meat or whatever it is you got but he's so lazy that he cannot roast it what is that word that the lord has spoken to you that you are not fighting over what is that promise that the lord has given you that you're so lazy that you're not even, you're not fighting over that. You're just like, oh, if he's, you know the way we say that, if it's the word of God, it will come to pass in his time. Keep waiting. It will not come to pass in his time. It will not come to pass in his time. How many promises have you received that you haven't seen the um, result of it? Is there anyone in the house that the Lord has said something? He said by this time of life, but you haven't done the condition, the prerequisite to those words. It will not come to pass. There is a part of God and there is a path we have to play. So some of us, we are that lazy man. We have received the word of God. We have received the truth of the word, but we are not worrying with them. This is that lazy man does not roast what he took in hunting, but diligence is a man's precious possession. It's a possession. When it's, yeah, yeah, that's a legacy. That's something you want to keep. It's a, pre, it's a man's precious possession. So as we, as we look at all of those things, we will still we'll study more and then we'll pick all of these character traits, see those that exemplify them and those that didn't. And we'll see how we can practically start implementing them in our lives. I'm not saying we are going to become um, character giants tomorrow, but we're going to trust the Holy Spirit that this little we give to him that is going to multiply it. If you don't give God anything to work with, what do you expect? If you have one million and our effort or our, dilig our diligence is zero, what happens? One million times zero. Zero. But if it's one thing you're going to work on and God puts his own one million, his own backing in that, that one effort you put is going to what, be one million. So if you put two, it's going to multiply that too. 
So that's what God is, is, is expecting from us. Like those, the story of those, um, those servants that, 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 that their master gave them that talent. He gave to one, one, he gave two, and he gave five. He said, go trade with them. God has given us all of these deposits and he, he's giving us time. He says time and chance happens to them. He's giving us time. He's giving us opportunity. Go trade with them. And he's waiting to see what we're going to do with it. So you don't want to come back like that um, one servant and say, uh, I know that um, your way is crooked. You are, you are such a wicked man. God is going to, God's testament to that man is going to be different from what he said to those two. Say, so you, you are faithful. It's not the size, but it's what is the heart. Say, so you faithful servant, come into the what, the reward of your master. And that's what we are expecting of our father. That's what we're expecting that, that, that when, we, when we look at it, you know, some of us, we want people to be proud of us. Like I said, I already said that we are, we are working for this audience of wonder. Our greatest reward and our greatest joy will be that the Father will look at us and say, you look so much like me. Because on earth, you acted so much like me. You made the world that didn't know see what I look like. That will be our testament in the name of the Lord Jesus. Can we just be on our feet as we just pray this prayer this morning? I know we've prayed during the, the, the pre-service prayer. And this morning, just ask that, Lord, you know me. You know me more than I know myself. Lord, open, open myself. Reveal me to me, oh God. If there are things that I'm trying to camouflage, if there are things I'm pretending that they don't even exist in my life, Lord, would you just show me a true picture of me? Show me me the way you see me, not the way others see me. Not what others think about me, not the accolades of men, but the way you see me. You know all the, the, the shortcomings. You know all the lapses. You know where they are. Would you show me, me this morning in the name of Jesus? If you're in house or you're watching online and you know that you don't even have that premise of having the having to ask the Father this I mean this question. You have a relationship with Jesus. That's the most important. That's how we come into that kingdom. Would you just say to the Lord this morning, Father Lord, I accept you my life i'm giving you this opportunity to make something good out of my life come into my life and do something in the name of jesus in the name of jesus if you said thus prayer either in house or online we have bibles at the at the foyer that you can pick up but lord this morning our outcry to you that you make us like you in the name of jesus in our words, in our speech, and in our actions, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray.